we're so excited today to have Judy Hodge, retired music teacher, and my mom, and she is on the spot. She tried to bribe us to get us to show her the questions beforehand. And that oh, was I don't get to pick the questions. A hard no. Okay. Nope, you've seen you've seen the show. Okay. What's a relationship in your life that has been strained or challenging and how do you navigate it? Hmm. A relationship in my life that has been strained and challenging. There have been so many. My best relationship in my life is with my daughter, Natalie Hodge. Now, I don't think I would call it strained relationship. Sometimes during middle school, that was more, our most difficult point. Well, it was, <laughs> middle school's tough for everyone. Yeah, it was tough for parents and it's tough for young people. And I think if I had a better understanding of the the problems that middle school kids have or that you have, I think it would have been better. So looking back, I think we would have had a better relationship during that period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did all right. Yeah, we did good. We did the best we, we, we could. made it out. We survived. We survived. Well, I, that might have been a challenging because I love you so much that I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted you to grow as an independent woman so it was a struggle. Am I being strict enough? Am I being too lenient? What should I do? It was it was hard. Okay. Yeah, tough decisions. Tough decisions. But I hung in there. Thank you. Threatened you a few times, but you know. Okay. We made it. We made it through middle school. All right. So you shared, and of course I shared in the intro that you're a retired teacher. Tell us about how that transition has been. I know how it's been for me, but how has it been for you? Teaching for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I can hardly believe it. The first year I taught, I was going to quit because I had no equipment. I had four different schools during the week. I stayed sick. I could talk by the end of the week. It was, it was something that each year it got better and better and better. And I miss it. The other day I was at church and the pastor preached about uh, the wise man building his house upon a rock. And I immediately remembered a song I taught my kindergartners and the hand motions. And I just went, oh no, I really miss my children. Yeah. And some of the fun things I did with them. Yeah. It's an interesting dynamic because over the years, I've not had significant like longevity in a position and you doing something for 40 years. And then I think the longest I've ever been in a role was like recently six years. And I've had, you know, all of these different experiences. That's been fun to kind of navigate the communication around my differences in my career thought process and how you perceive career. Right. Do you see that as a, a trend now? Yes, it is a trend because when I grew up, you get a job, you stay there until you retire. Mm -hmm. That was the thing. That's what everybody thought you did. And when you started quitting jobs and moving <laughs> here and moving there, I'm going like, what? Where's your 401k or whatever? Non-existent. You know, Non-existent. <laughs> that, what that means. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I think one thing that helped me with my job was the, the growth and the change. And I was, I was proud that I was able to change with the times, with technology coming in, mm -hmm. new ways of doing things, made it more interesting. Yeah, so. absolutely. I think whether you stick with something for 40 years or – you change every few years. It is about making each day a new day and finding new ways to identify points of joy and appreciation right. for that role. Otherwise, you could be in something for six months and it's stale. What are some of the ways, besides incorporating technology, but what are some of the other ways that you kept teaching fresh for so long? I would look at maybe a little simple song and see that you could teach several subjects with a song like a little song about the bee going from tree to tree. Well, we have language arts. 
the kids can read the words. We have rhythm. We have the music elements. You have science. What about the bee? You know, then we talk about the honeycombs and what, what do bees do? We have instruments. So I have the music, the flight of the bumblebee played on the violin. And it was just so many things you could do. The kids are moving. Mm -hmm. They're pretending to be bees. A lot of movement, a lot of self-expression made it fun. I was having fun. So if I was having fun, they were having fun. So with the changes in our world and how we receive information, how we're educated, what do you see as some of the new challenges that teachers face as you kind of look back at your experience and then also as you're in communication with other teachers who are still in the game? I think it's getting hard to keep the kids engaged mm -hmm. because they're so focused on their phones or iPads or whatever. And, you know, just getting out, maybe taking them outside. They are missing some of the things that are around them. And I think we as educators or as the ones that are still doing it, need to try to expose them to more things outside of the technology to get them appreciate some of the things in the world around them. Mm -hmm. As much as I like technology, I think sometimes we need hands on other things. Right, right. Keep a good mix. A mix, right. Mm -hmm. The technology can bring in things that they might not be able to see otherwise, like uh, maybe an orchestra or instruments from another country that I don't have in the classroom to see demonstrations of that. But other than that, they need a lot of hands-on experiences. So that's one thing I really appreciated about you as a mom and, and what I valued growing up is that you were always focused on making sure that I had hands-on experiences, that we went to different shows and plays Like and I drug you concerts. to the opera. Was it yes, Leotine Price? it was Leotine Price. You had to dress up. I didn't. And you had a little face. Like what was the face? face? Show the face. But she just had the face. Mm -hmm. But you didn't, you didn't argue with me. No. And then what did you end up doing? Well, I loved it. Yeah. She was sitting at the edge of her seat, and she was just all engaged. And you have to expose kids to things that they might not, they think they don't like. Right. Well, exposure. Well, maybe they might not like it, but they've been exposed. Right. Absolutely. And there's a way to challenge and support. So challenging young people to have those experiences and then supporting them if it's something that they don't care for, but they've taken the risk to be there. You know, maybe there's a reward after, I don't know. Yeah, I taught the kids, fourth and fifth graders, how to play a recorder. And, you know, the parents didn't like me. It was it was pretty ugly. It the was recorder pretty... sound is so, like... Just... No, but once I got going, it was better. But Well, you I... didn't like it when I played at home, so... Well, we know how that was. <laughs> um, but the thing that they got out of that was it was an exercise for their minds, Mm -hmm. They were taught discipline and they were taught appreciation because they thought they could pick it up and just start blowing and working their fingers like most kids do. And that was it. So then I think they had, even if they never played another instrument, they had appreciation for people who could. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the elements that I was proud of. Yeah, absolutely. And that early music education, you know, there are some families that you grow up in who they're musicians or they're connected to um, a faith-based group that you know might have a musical element to it. So those are the exceptions sometimes. You're not always in an environment where you're connected to an instrument. For those folks who didn't have that environment, the recorder was that first moment where you have your instrument and you're playing it and you're learning it. Talk about the importance of playing an instrument, what does that do for young people? Everything. It broadens their horizons. It, people who play instruments are just very intelligent because it's a mind exercise. It are you really saying that is. because you play an instrument? Of course. <laughs> it's working your, your brain. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Even older people taking up instruments. It's great. I also like bringing in instruments from other cultures, my Native American instruments, my African instruments, and letting the kids play them. I spent a lot of money on some of them, but I let the kids play and touch and experience that. So that was important. 
If you could go back in time and do something completely different than being a music teacher, what would that be? A rocket scientist. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I can't I can't imagine. Um what else? Mm -hmm. You know, even though I was gonna quit the first year. Yeah. I was quitting. Right. Do you remember the moment where you made the decision, this is it? I I'm sticking with it. When I couldn't get another job. <laughs> <laughs> I think first year was rough, the second year. Oh, I can make it. I can make it. I'm getting more materials. I didn't have any materials. Getting more materials. Third year, um, I had a, a lady that worked at the school board office named Jewel Jones, who was just an awesome person. And she said, you're driving too far. So she moved me to a closer schools. That helped. So every year it became better and better. I, I became more confident in what I was doing. I got good evaluations. Oh, wow. So I'm doing something right. So right. it got better and better. And then I just enjoyed a lot of the things that I was doing. What's your pro tip for new teachers who are just starting off and they're feeling kind of like you were that first year? Like, this is not for me, player. What would you <laughs> say? I would say team up with, with someone that's been there a while and just get under their wing and just really talk to them and get good ideas and just have a go-to person. I did, I had, I worked with uh, Mary Ann Peek the first uh, few years and she was a big help. That would be the tip. Team up with someone. Okay. Who are you teaming up with these days now that you're retired? Do you have a oh, crew my that you run with? I, I got a crew. I have a crew. Okay. The retirement crew. <laughs> What do you guys do? Well, I have some people I like to travel with. Some people I like to go out to dinner with. Some people I like to talk on the phone forever with. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I have different friends that have different interests. So. Where's the most interesting place you've traveled so far? Oh, boy. So many trips. Well, I think the trip we had from California. Mm this way and stopping on, at those little places along, which would have been on I-40, which Route 66, we would get off of I-40 mm -hmm. and go in these little towns. Yeah. That was awesome. Seeing really different parts was an of the adventure. country. It was an adventure. Yeah. When you spend five days in the car with anyone, it's an adventure. It was. Yeah. And you were good. You were very good tour guide. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. The one pro tip that I would say, or not actually a pro tip, but the one thing I experienced that I warn people about who take those long road trips is that after you've been in the car so long, when you get out of the car, you start to like, you'll dream you're still driving or your body you see is the road. going through you the see motions. The road. You see. It's mm -hmm. really strange. Um, so it takes you maybe a couple of days to reset and feel like normal again. Mm -hmm. Where's a place you're looking forward to going in your retirement adventures? <sighs> Niagara Falls. Okay. Yeah. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Aloha. Uh, a lot of my friends are going to Europe. Uh, there's still some places in the United States that I would like to see. I love traveling across this country. I did an Amtrak trip with Katherine Harrison in 2013, and it was it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Just on the Am I love trains. Cause I grew up around trains and uh, we traveled across the country on an Amtrak tour. And that was awesome. Just awesome. Yeah. So I know there are folks who are retired or retiring and they aspire to travel. Give some pro tips to those folks who are wanting to hit the road. Maybe they have a limited budget. What are some th things they can do to get out there? I think some of the bus tours are very mm, good. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, I went to Memphis. I had been to Memphis a couple of times. I went on a bus, and it was set up. Everything is set up, laid out. A lot of these you can pay a little bit at a time yeah, or whatever. Yeah, payment plan. Payment plan, and then you can go. And it's nice. Everything is set up for you, so you don't have to figure it out. Right. So that's some of the good things that you can do. The senior citizens from a park and rec, they have some great trips. Okay. And those You've been are on easy. A, a few of those. What, where right. Are you going we with went them? to Smith Mountain Lake and rode the riverboat. 
Okay. Um, was there gambling what, on that riverboat? Uh, I, I couldn't find it. Okay. <laughs> what you were looking. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> Uh, we went to the Greenbrier in West Virginia. Even though I grew up in West Virginia, people say, you've never been to the Greenbrier? I said, I was a little poor coal miner's daughter. I was yeah. like, why was I going to the Greenbrier? Yeah, for what? And like, you would have gone to every place in West Virginia, even if you were a person I know. of means. Right. Like, I, yes, I've hit all the spots in all West Virginia. All the spots in West Virginia. So that was, that was very enlightening. Very, okay. very nice. So those trips are very good for seniors with a limited budget, and most of us have a limited budget, <laughs> you know, when the eagle flies, as I call it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in order to kind of compensate for that limited budget, you do some side hustling with uh, substituting. I have substituted, yes, and I enjoy that from time to time. How is it to get back in the classroom after having taught for so long and then kind of re-emerging as the sub? Because the sub is is different than the teacher. Oh, yes. I follow the plans. But I like dynamic. To, I like to engage with the students. I've done some high schools, and I thought that was interesting. I, I like to walk around and talk to the students. What are you doing? What Are you, are you a senior? What are you going to do after you graduate? Or are you doing your work? You need to do your work. You know, I walk around and look. You know, they'd be changing up their screens before I get there. But you okay, know. so you don't, you're not buying it. No, I'm no, not. no. Mm -mm. So I'm not gonna name names, but I had some subs when I was, you know, in school who we knew Miss X or Mr. X. They're going to be reading a novel while they're subbing. No, is that that's no? You're there for business. Yes. Okay. Right. Although it's difficult subbing and they're on their uh, devices to do their work and just to, you know, so I don't like to sit down because I'll doze off. So I'll have to move around and try to do the, try to stay up, you know, keep it going. Okay. When you're not subbing and traveling, what are you into? I kind of know, but for the people. Well, I play uh, the piano at my church. Mm -hmm. Moral Hill Missionary Baptist Church in Axton. Oh, what was I that? I do like a, a reading. I do a lot of research. Re I'm always researching something. Something. You're going always on. on Facebook doing stuff. I know. Well, that. I'm you know posting, reposting some of the things about hometown hustle. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, that's not all you do, but. Certainly. Yeah. You right. do repost a lot of my stuff. Sometimes I feel like your friends probably are like, would Judy please stop talking about this girl? Oh, they might. I know. I've, I've been messaging them and everything. So they, they yeah. see you in their sleep. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad, but thank you for being a part of the marketing team. <laughs> so reading and researching, this is what you're calling your Facebook time. No, I do a lot of YouTube researching, looking at okay. some things. Health. I've been I've been working on my health. Lately. Oh, good. Okay, tell us about yes. that. Just things to eat that help you. Exercises, things that will help strengthen you, give you flexibility. What's something you can share with us that's a recent tip you've come across that you feel like this is going to help you? I've been people. studying okra. Oh, I've never eaten okay. okra, and now I was studying okra. How good it is for you? Okay, what are some of the benefits of okra? I don't know. Uh, it's good for cholesterol, blood mm -hmm. pressure, diabetes, all of that. Okay, skin, hair, all that stuff. Oh, all right. Well, I'm looking forward to you um, making some okra for us. Well, think about eating it raw. Okay. Yeah. Well, definitely have enjoyed sitting with you and hearing some of these insights. I also study oh, okay. a lot of history, a lot of things that have happened in the past. I love history. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a closeout. It was. Well, I was right. getting ready to talk some more. Yeah, I saw you winding <laughs> up. And when I start with that kind of recap. Of that's a closeout? That's a closeout. Yeah, that's when we're, well, we're wrapping up the show. I didn't have a script today. It is an unscripted program. So oh, okay. that's traditionally what we do. So really enjoyed chatting with you about some of the things that you have going on currently. And of course, your insights as a retired teacher. 
and I love you, and I appreciate you. I love you. you too, Natalie. You're my favorite child. Hmm. I'm an only child, so there's that. Great. All right, so thank you for coming on the spot, Well, Mom. thank you for inviting me. Why is this so weird? Why are you being weird? This is not... <laughs> I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> oh, my God.